Hello again, I am Blunty. This is actually the second part of the build of this, I think, episode number six in total of the full build. Well, episode number eight, I guess, if you count episode zero as an episode, which we do, because it is there in the playlist and everything. Anyway, if you're just catching up and you haven't seen the other videos, we went through all the components I chose from a new gaming PC rig. We talked about why I chose what I chose. We, in, in the last episode, we put everything together on the bench top and tested to make sure it actually turns on and works. And yes, it did first time, believe it or not. Although I did get slightly confused about the way it booted up because it didn't boot straight into the BIOS for some reason and went straight to a um, terminal prompt, which I don't remember reading about in the manual. Maybe I skipped that page. Anyway, I did find the manual, by the way. See? Don't need any more, but I did find it uh, on manuals. By the way, for the for the, I didn't mention this when we we're talking about the case, but the uh, well, it's not really a manual. It's a quick start guide, really, but it is superb for for this Corsair case. I'm not sure whether you can even see that on camera or not. Probably not. It's probably a bit bright, um, but it's a very very clearly detailed uh, exploded diagram of the case, detailing each and every piece and what it's supposed to be there for, uh, and, and showing you in, in great detail how it all goes together, how it all comes apart. It is. Well, uh, just just fantastically well done for a, a diagram of that type and the cases back in my day when the last time I built a system which again is about 10 years ago when I, when the first time I last time I built a system up from scratch the manuals were just nothing like this uh, and on the back it uh, details again I don't know whether you can see that or not but I'll try and show you anyway um, uh, all the different types of screws and other componentry that comes with it and what they are for apparently they even give you some cable ties they must be in the box inside uh, and, and rubber feet for the bottom of the case. And they give you the rubber feet separately because, again, this case can be set up sideways for the window or you can set it up that way and have just the window on the top depending on what your preference is and how it's going to look where you want it to sit. I'm going to go sideways. So, we've confirmed that all the components work, or the main components work. Next step, of course, is to put them in the box. Uh, first stage of doing that is to dismantle all the main panels of the box so you can get two all the mounting bits and pieces easily. So the side panel obviously that comes off, we'll put that down somewhere carefully so we don't scratch up the uh, uh, the, the panel or the window. The window does have plastic coating on both sides because it is a, a plastic window basically and they do tend to scratch fairly easily. I might look into figuring out if I can replace this with a glass panel at some point because glass is nicer. Uh, it's heavier but nicer. It's, it's not quite as reflective as, as plastic is so you can see through it a bit easier especially on camera. Um, and, and much, much more resilient uh, to scratching and everything. Easy to shatter, but resilient to scratching. I'll get some hardened glass on. I'll look into that sometime, maybe, when I do the case modding. So, pop that down there, nice and secure. Uh, the side panel comes off in the same way, just a couple of thumb screws on the side. And I'm sorry, I'm not showing you this stuff in detail. Every case is a little bit different anyway, so unless you're using a specific case, this isn't particularly useful to you anyway. And if you are using this specific case, Corsa themselves have a video up on their YouTube channel which details uh, a very, very quick build in the system and, and shows you how it all comes about and where stuff should go in detail. And it's uh, shot reasonably well. So I'm not going to bother about showing you the detail shots of a lot of this stuff. I did um, point this out in the video as well, but this magnetic um, dust trap for the for the vents is lovely and I know a lot of cases have those these days but again last time I built a system last time I purchased a case that, that was that was just not a thing that existed and it's just a groovy idea so both side panels off we are going to need to take the top panel off of this case as well oops okay the top panel uh, thumb screws are not captured like the ones in the side panel for some reason that's a bit disappointing I didn't notice that Oh well, uh, we need to take that off because that's how we get to the bays for the uh, 2.5 inch drive bays, which we'll be using. I don't have any, I know that you don't have any 3.5 inch drives here at the moment. I've got a couple of mechanical 2.5s which I'll recover from a hard drive. And I do have some SSDs on the way as well, or an SSD and another one, which I'll buy later. But yeah, we need to take the top one off so we can get to those uh, toolless quick loading drive trays up there. Uh, and there's another one on the back here for the... 3.5 mil drives, which we don't need, but I am going to take that panel cover panel off anyway, because uh, why's my nose so itchy? Excuse me. Arr. I'll put those screws over here. Oh, that one's captured. See, that one's captured. That one doesn't. That's, you're not going to lose that one. Um, but yeah, I need to take that panel off because there's a box mounted inside one of the toolless drive cages, which will contain, should contain, various bits of mounting hardware. So we can slide that back in there now. We're not going to need 
these in this particular build at this stage. I will do at some point if I ever get a full size drive to put in there. Um, or, or another piece of hardware that, you know, can belong. Well, I'm putting this around the wrong way, aren't I? So I'm trying, I'm trying to do this ass backwards so you can at least see a little bit of what I'm doing on camera. I guess what I should have done is set up yet another over-the-shoulder over, over the shoulder camera. I could have set this thing up over my shoulder or something, but too late now. We've started. <laughs> you just have to deal with it. So, uh, we won't need to take the front panel off because I won't need to move the, the fans that are in the front of the case. And I don't think there's any other reason why I would need to get that off because we do have the front panel I.O. Cables already coming through the side there. So good. What I'm going to do now is tip this thing on its side. Next up, uh, where's my. I guess I left it in the box there. So let me. Okay, we'll do it this way. We'll look at the mounting hardware in a section. Now we need to look at that mounting hardware now because we're going to need this in a moment. So I'm working without a script, without a plan. Basically, I've just turned the camera on and started building. So. This video may be terrible, and it may be kind of cool. Don't need that anymore. All right, so yeah, basically all the screws that were detailed in the quick start guide in their own little separate Ziploc bags, oh, except for the feet. They are not in their own separate Ziploc bags. We'll pop those back in there, and we'll grab those cable ties. We'll pop those in here for the time being as well. Keep those in one place. Um, this whole build, by the way, okay, I don't think I'm going to need anything else but a Phillips head screwdriver and a set of snips for the cable ties. So if you're not worried about leaving tags on your cable ties, you could do the entire thing with one screwdriver, I think. Pretty sure that's all I'm going to need anyway. So, okay, those would be hard drive mounting. Those are, and those are long fan screws. We don't need those. Don't know where they are. There's the standoff. There's the coarse screws there. Okay, let's just double check what I'm dealing with here. All right, probably going to edit that bit out because that was just me looking at the various types of screws. Not very exciting. So we can look inside the case. Now, where's my camera? We'll give you a look at this. We have a nice little bay here. The first thing to do would be to pop in the back plate for the uh, for the motherboard I.O. And that's right here. And then we can drop the motherboard into place and get that mounted. After that, we will start uh, a little bit of basic cable management, get the everything plugged in. Um, and then we will attach the drives and get those plugged in. Uh, make sure we have all the fans and ins and outs and cable management, uh, sorry, the front panel uh, connectors done so we can actually hit the button. And oh, that's, those are really nice buttons, actually. I didn't, I didn't make note of that in my original look at the thing. I didn't, I guess I didn't press the buttons when I got it out of the box, but those are really nice buttons. A nice, nice firm feel to them. Click in. Ooh, ooh, very nice course here. Very nice. So, Right, I was doing this because I need to get this out of the way because I need to, I am grounded properly. Let's double check that before I start touching the expensive components. So I need to get into this box again. Here's where I start needing this bit. So go ahead and put this on the ground down here. Uh, and I should really put that motherboard someplace. Well, okay. I guess it can stay there for now because we're going to be installing it in just a moment anyway. Just have to be a little bit careful we don't bang into it. <laughs> so, motherboard I.O. panel. And we talked about this in the previous uh, video when we were unbox uh, pulling the, the motherboard out. Ooh, I didn't notice that before. It's all nicely padded on the back too, so the motherboard sort of squishes into it and seals up right nicely. That's really nice. Actually, I might see if I can show you that on, on camera here. Writing to the memory card was not completely correct to recover data. Oh dear, something happened. Cannot recover data. Unable to read memory card, reinsert memory card. Well, I, I guess that camera's toast. Don't know what went wrong with there, but we will use my... I don't have time to problem solve that. I'm in the middle of a video, so we'll use my iPhone instead. So there we go. We have just this... this yeah, there we go. You can see it on camera there. The, the squidgy bits on the back of the I.O. plate there. So I guess some of the cutaways on this part of the video are going to look slightly uglier than they should. Thanks, thanks uh, Sony camera for your inexplic inexplicable memory card malfunction. So basically, I know you can't see this, so I'm going to turn it around. Basically you just uh, move this thing into position. There are, there's no screws, no mounting or anything. It's basically a friction mount. It's designed to clip in there. 
and it will require moderate force because these things are basically designed to go in and never ever move again unless you need to replace another board in which case you need to pry it out so there we go clickety 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 click it feels nice and solid whoops not, not too solid come on there we go ah that's the last corner yeah okay <laughs> that's in place so let's Okay, that's cable for the top fan. We'll get that out of our way. And everything else can go back into the back part of the case for now. Get all the cables out of the way. That one's out of the way. That one's out of the way. All right, so it's time to look at the mounting options for the motherboard here. I think everything is pretty much in place as it should be. All the standoffs are where they need to be for the default micro ATX thing. I guess they are, the standoff they gave us here is just a, a bonus one in case something goes missing or perhaps the Nano ITX needs a separate standoff somewhere. I don't know. Either way, looks like we're good to go. So I'll pick up the motherboard here. And we should be able to just ease it in. You do have to be careful you're not going to scratch the back plate of the motherboard across the mounting screws and stuff in the box. Um, so a little bit of care is required just to line up that IA plate and set the thing down. And it looks like we are lining up with our screw holes. Good. Next thing we need is which one of these are the motherboard ones. And we're good to go. So I need one, two, three, four, nine of those all together for the motherboard, which is a standard number and has been for many, many years. So again, I know it's, it's tough, you guys can't see this, but I will maybe uh, try and do at least one screw on camera for you. Otherwise, we'll just uh, throw an edit in here and, um, and get away with it. So what can we we'll try? Try that one just there. So do 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 do. Nope. Basically, just like you saw there, screwing it down into the appropriate places where the manual tells you to screw it in. I think I will just edit out the next section. Now, when you do these screws, by the way, you want them tight, but not so tight that they put any undue strain on the motherboard. You don't want it. Bit of a snafu. I have been using the wrong screws, which are apparently very, 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 very slightly different to the correct screws in that they will kind of bite into the uh, into the standoffs but not quite so a couple of these are have bitten quite well some of them have not for some reason that I can't quite comprehend so this one in the center uh, it felt like it connected properly but it is actually the wrong screw the ones I want are the ones without the flange on them so full honesty full disclosure I screwed up but it's okay. Every build has to have at least one or two minor screw-ups. Because if there aren't a couple of little problems from ineptitude or you're not paying close enough attention, then somewhere along the line you're going to hit a big problem. I'd rather have lots of little silly problems than one big problem, quite frankly. And uh, that was, yeah, there's, there's no one else to blame for me but that. I, 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 I picked the wrong bag of screws. Frankly. But now I've got the right bag of screws and these are fitting in much better. They're biting and going in properly as they should. I'm not confused anymore. I'll be right back with you. Alrighty, we now have the motherboard mounted with the correct screws. Again, sorry about the secondary camera here. It's um not the I hope I hope the footage I already shot with the Sony is going to be alright and, and the entire memory card hasn't been corrupted. Otherwise. Uh, I'm going to have all kinds of issues in editing when I go to cut away to that stuff because it won't be there anymore. Anyway, motherboard securely mounted. It's not going anywhere. It's not rattling. All the screws are in where they should be. I'm happy to move on to the next part, which is getting the power supply back in. Well, not back in, but in in the first place. And again, I'm going to have to turn away from you to do this, but it is essentially just 
taking the box of the power supply and screwing it into another box. There's nothing particularly interesting about what is about to happen. But uh, something to be mindful of when you are installing your power supply in general. Let's move those screws out of the way. Do, 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 do. Uh, is, is the position of your fan. Each case will have a different optional two options it, it, depending on where you want your fan. You might want it exhausting up into the case or down out of the case. This particular case is designed with one mounting position in mind and that is using the fan uh, on the outside because there is a vent directly on the side panel here because it is again the, this case has the power supply in its own separate chamber so we don't need to worry about its exhaust affecting the cooling temperature of the rest of the case where the CPU and, and graphics cards and all that should be. So, and again, a modular power supply would make life a little bit easier here without having to deal with all these cables, but saved a bit of money by not going modular because I can hide the cable mess from my unused cables and everything in this wonderfully designed case. So, uh, I think we can just go straight on in. And something else I'd like to point out in this case that I didn't notice when I first looked at it in the original uh, quick look video, whatever we're calling it, but uh, there are four little pads where it sits, and these are rubberized pads. And these will help isolate vibration and noise from being transferred through the case to help the power supply stay even quieter than it is. Although this Be Quiet power supply is like it is, as I've already discovered on the bench test, very, very quiet in its own right and didn't really vibrate at all. But still nice to have those. It's a nice touch. So it's a standard size, and we should be able to slide him right in there. There he goes. And uh, sits nice and secure on those pads, nice and tidy, fits perfect, it looks great. So now we just need to uh, select the correct screws <laughs> and pop this little beastie in. So let's double check again, because apparently I'm having some issues with my screwing. I'm not very good at screwing today, make of, uh, make of that what you will. Kodakt. Got it first try. <laughs> Okay, power supply is mounted and we're starting to have issues dealing with these cables. We'll just switch them into the case for the time being so I can actually turn this thing around. So there we go. I don't know how well you can see it on that camera there, but it is installed. It looks like it belongs there, which is always a plus. Of course, you won't be able to see it behind the vent of the case anyway, and that will be against the wall over here. <laughs> Doesn't really matter how it looks, but it looks really nice. It looks nice and tidy. So, uh, we should put some of these screws back in the little Ziploc bag before I send them flying all over the floor and they're gone forever until I uh, have to get up to pee at like 3am or something and, and then suddenly I find them all again embedded in my foot, like Lego. Right. So, next issue. Should we do the drives next, or actually we should start routing some of these cables around, I think, before we get too carried away with other uh, putting other devices in with our own cables. So, let's start uh, with the main power cable for the CPU. So we'll grab that, and we will pass it through a convenient location, through one of these cable routing holes in the case. Uh, which are all sort of rubber grommeted off. Oh, it looks like we got that one covered up, so we'll go through this one. That will make it more... Actually, yeah, no, well, okay, maybe we go through this one. Alright, so I'll grab the iPhone just so you can see what I'm doing here a little bit. Alright, there we go. We just come through one of those uh, cable management holes there, and so my iPhone's having all kinds of issues with the glare from the lights and everything. But uh, let's try it around this way. I don't know. No, that's no better. Anyway, take my word for it. These whoops are easy. Didn't mean to do that. We're just routing some cables around here, and uh, I'll probably put an edit here because there's not much I can say about this besides we're poking some wires through some holes and then plugging them into the motherboard where they belong. All right, that's the main power done. And again, like I said in the uh, one of the original first the first four videos before the build, I think I'm going to replace these cables with sleeved cables at some point because that sort of rainbow of colours coming out the other end of that not completely sleeved cable looks kind of ugly. But we'll worry about aesthetics as we get further on. Uh, let's do fan next. Top fan. So we'll plug uh, again. This is just sort of all straightforward stuff. You plug the fans into the fan headers, just as described on your motherboard manual. So again, we'll uh, slip into 
an edit or some music or something while I do this. Just have to pause and marvel at the, I mean, I read in other reviews about this case, just how good the cable management is. And it's just superb. There are, there are holes and grommets and routing sort of places everywhere you absolutely need them to be to hide as much of the cabling as possible. It's, it's brilliant. I'm loving this. Cases were never this well designed last time I had <laughs> to deal with this stuff. Just wasn't even, wasn't even close to this elegant. Next up, we have front panel connections for, let's have a look, see what we're dealing with here. Whoops, I've got myself tangled up on my another fan cable. Okay, there, there we go. So on the front panel connections, we have one connection for the USB 3.0 ports, two of which are on the front of the case. The other six are on the back of the case. So this plugs into a connection on the motherboard to connect to its internal USB 3.0 uh, connectors. The other connectors we've got here are for the uh, lights, for the power, uh, reset, drive activity, and also, of course, the switches to be able to turn uh, uh, you know, the machine on and off and reset it. The other connector is for the front panel audio connections, which I probably will never use because it's better to use the audio on the back of the machine because that's the most direct path uh, for the audio. If you're using the front panel audio, it obviously has to come through the case via this cable, which isn't particularly well shielded and runs past a bunch of components with power coming through it. And there's the potential for noise and interference and signal degradation and all that kind of stuff, because it is an analog signal coming through here. Um, so, but yeah, the, the front panel audio is basic use only. I probably will never use it, but I'm going to hook it up anyway, just on the off chance that I do need to use it for whatever reason. Or, or maybe, maybe all my worries about potential interference will be for naught, and this will actually work perfectly fine. Either way, we must run the cable. No point leaving it unconnected when there are connectors sitting there waiting for it. I mean, whether or not you're ever going to use it, might as well connect it up just in case. So uh, that's the next on the list. And once I get this connected up, we will grab the other camera, and I'll show you the nifty trick this motherboard comes with. And some, m most motherboards, well, not most, Many of the higher end motherboards come with a nifty little trick to help you out with these, but we'll, we'll cover that in a second. Give me a sec to hook this up. Like there. Right. I'm taking some care to cable manage here, but I'm not going overboard with it. Like uh, I'm not using any cable ties yet because some of this cabling will change. Uh, like I said, I might switch around the fans. I might completely replace the fans. Uh, at some stage quite soon with some lit up ones, so I'm not going to be too worried about those. Uh, and all the rest of the cable management happens at the back of the case through these grommets, so I don't really need to cable tie anything down to keep it tidy. Everything should be, as long as I'm reasonably careful about how I route things, we should be okay here. Let me just uh, see if I can give you a little bit of a... So that was the HD audio we just routed there to the back of the case, and as you can see it sort of runs just underneath the motherboard there along with uh, that's the top fan case, uh, the, so the, the top of the case fan there. One of the front fans runs there, so that runs back through here and then back out again into the fan. And the top fan up here plugs into the auxiliary CPU fan header up here. So the plan is, you know, when the, when the CPU is working hard, this fan will kick up alongside this to get some airflow directly uh, across that. Uh, might be a better idea to do this one just to get is circulating that way, but we'll figure that out later. Either way, fans, audio are hooked up. Now, about that other thing I was going to tell you. Now, the front panel connections for the the, the lights and all that sort of stuff are, I think those are these ones down here. If we can get that to focus for us. I'm pretty sure those are the ones we're after. And as you can see, they're kind of fiddly to get to. They're down at the bottom of the case. Some people do this stuff before you mount the motherboard in the case. I have never tended to do that. But uh, it can be fiddly because when you get the cable, it is all these separate little pins here. And a couple of these are uh, important to get around the right way. The switches can go whichever way you like. You don't need to worry about those. They're a switch. It just closes the circuit. It doesn't matter. The polarity doesn't matter, basically. But for the LEDs, 
polarity absolutely matters because LEDs will not pass current the wrong way because they are diodes, light emitting diode. And if you know anything about electronics, a diode lets power run one way and not the other way. So you need to get around these the right way. And that can be a bit fiddly in a, in a case that's sort of hard to see when you've got the motherboard mounted, but that's where, where are they? Where are they? Where's those things? Where are the things? Ah, these are what I was talking about. These little cheater headers here. Basically, you, where are they? I'm looking through the camera lens trying to find it. Basically, you, you plug all these annoying little cables you grab these and you plug them into the pins on this and then this plugs directly under the motherboard and it is keyed see that little blackout square at the top there you can't plug it in the wrong way around it just won't go so it makes it much 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 easier just to just to get these connections onto the motherboard without trying to you know stick your fingers in the case and, and wiggle around and get them all wired in the right row around and in the right connection and everything because it is extremely fiddly to do that so while it is uh, a little more kind of awkward looking uh, and going to one connection to another it's a potential point of failure but for these connections it's really not an issue they're not carrying any data or anything like that it's just basic power and switching so it's fine just doing that you're not you're not losing anything um, and they're you know they're not losing any aesthetics it's small anyway you know size of my fingernail um, so yeah while it's you know slightly cheaty doing it the easy way <laughs> it is it is it's perfectly legitimate you know I'm not losing any uh, hardcore points for using these I don't think or am I? Am I? I don't know. Some people really hate these things. Uh, you know, the, the hard copy. Why don't you do it the hard way? It's the proper way to do it anyway. No. Why would you want to do it the hard way when there's an easy way to do it, you drongo? Drongo. Now, that's a word I haven't used in a while. Sorry, I just had to make sure my microphone was recording. I don't remember turning it on. <laughs> that would have been awkward. All right, so let's get this, uh, let's get this done. So it's just a matter of me plugging these in and into the case. So we'll be back after an edit or a time lapse or something. And there we are. And you know, just, just looking at that, maybe I will do it the hard way. That does look a little bit too clumsy, especially compared to the fan one there. So I think I'll leave it like that for now, just to make sure I've actually got them in the right positions and everything. I'm pretty sure I do, <laughs> but just in case we'll leave them there. But I think once I'm, I'm polishing off the rest of the case, once I'm making my final run of details and, and cable runs and stuff, I might just remove those, those cheaty cheaty block things because yeah I, I, I I'm not a huge fan of how I mean it's a very small detail and no one's ever really going to notice but I'm going to know it's there and it just yeah they don't quite sit apparently you know they, 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 they sit in an odd angle and everything so that's the front panel switches and LEDs and stuff done and yeah I'm gonna have to do something about that cable it's just sort of sitting at a weird angle but that's that'll do for now it's black and saddle Right, next up, the only cable we have from the front of the case left is, let's just tidy those up a bit, is the USB 3.0 header. And this is, is a real bugbear. I mean, this is a huge connector for what it needs to be. It, the USB 2.0 connectors are much like the, the connectors I just put in. They're very, very small and tidy and discreet. And I don't know who made the decision to make the USB 3 connector so bulky and, and you know, the, the cables are thick. You can't really sort of get it around the corner of the motherboard. No, it's just, I want to know who made that decision for that particular cable type. And I want them to, I want them to suffer a, a, a desperate, um, a, a, I don't know, life crisis. I'm not going to wish them dead because it's not that big of a deal, but at least the one on this motherboard is black. The standard color um, for both the connector on the motherboard and the connector at the end of the cable is this hideous bright blue, which really stands out. Unfortunately, luckily for me, MSI and Corsair both have decided to go with subtle black. So it doesn't look too hideous in people's cases. Uh, and again, it's a keyed connection. You can't plug it in around the wrong way, as I just almost tried to do because I was just facing the wrong way. So we'll get that plugged in right here. Actually, we'll get the, actually, I can't do this one-handed. I can't show you on the camera how this looks. Uh, there's plenty of videos showing the process of just plugging in this particular connector and more than a few people complaining about the same thing. I just complained about the size and awkwardness of this connector and its thick cables, just making cable management a little more ugly and obnoxious and difficult than it should be. There's a nice close-up of the, uh, USB 3 connector there, as you can see, can't really turn a very tight corner with these cables, so kind of have to loop around into the cable management grommet there. 
doesn't look too bad and maybe I'll put it down in this lower one here to make it sort of a little more parallel or something but actually I'm going to try that now I'm going to try that straight away because that that something doesn't look right about that it looks a bit clumsy so out we come again I'm poking back through that one Arrgh, give the case a bit of a reach around oops dropped it let it go there you are right so let's pop it through the other connection hole there it's still not quite parallel with the actual connection on the motherboard but I think it might look a little bit tidier than going through that top one let's get these cables going around the right way and plug it in there so let's see yeah that looks a little bit better so that does look a little bit better then the cables are, are more or less parallel and they're diving straight back into those cable management holes there and I just want to get that one to go around that corner a bit tighter it's, I don't want it coming this way but yeah we're getting there the cable the cable management is, is looking all right um, I was never huge on cable management I did too <laughs> a little bit of cable management in, in one of the first cases I've built. I've, I recently found some very old photos of the first case mod I ever did. And this was in the time where IDE cables were the standard, not SATA. Have you ever seen an IDE cable? The big, you know, really wide gray ribbon cable. Well, when case modeling started just becoming a thing, they did rounded IDE cables, which is brilliant. It made cable tidy so much better. It made airflow better instead of these big wide cables blocking airflow. So I got some yellow ones and, you know, they were still thick and awkward and huge and stiff and... Uh, ha 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 ha. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll probably put a few of the pictures up on screen now. It, it looks hideous by today's cable management standards, but back in the day, that was a, that was a very clean looking case. <laughs> but this case is already looking better than that one ever did, so <laughs> making progress. All right, let's, let's see about... Yeah, okay, we'll get uh, get this major power cable. If I can just get it to stay up here, I'll be fine. In fact, I might grab one of those cable ties and get that done now, just to keep this thing out of my way a bit. Do, 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 do. Hopefully this shouldn't interfere with the case. Ah, fiddly. It's fiddly. It's fighting against me. The cable wants to spring back into its own location. Again, I'll probably wind up replacing these with sleeved cable extensions to make it all look much nicer anyway. But for right now, it'll help keep it where I want it to be at least. I won't even bother, um, that's, yeah. I won't even bother trimming off the tail of that cable. No, so I will. Might as well do it while I'm here. There we go. That's a bit better. And that USB 3.0 cable can just go there. So yeah, the, this, the whole backside of this case where the cables are is never going to look very tidy anyway. There's a lot of cables to be stuffed in there, but I just want to get some semblance of not being tangled. Okay, so that's all the motherboard connections, I think. Let me just double check things here. What have we got? We've got... Oh, oh, I forgot the CPU power. That's very important. I've got to run the CPU power. That's about the only thing that's left. All right, CPU power. We definitely need some of that. Uh, and it's not those connections. It's not those. Where is it? There it is. There it is. Is that you down there? Where'd you go? Where'd you go, buddy? Where did it go? There it is. <laughs> Found you. All right, let's unfurl this. And where do we want to route this one through? I think we can. Ooh, that's a bit tight, isn't it? All right, this one's a bit of an awkward one, but you know, we'll get her done. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, just doesn't even want to come through that grommet. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, no, I think I can get away with this in a reasonably tidy way. Do, do, do. Let's give me some slack. Thank you. I'll turn the corner. So what I've just done there is we've pulled the CPU cable through the, the grommet on this side here at the top. We've routed the cable sort of over the top of the board under behind the fan a little bit. I don't think we're in the... Oh, actually, yeah, we need to do something about that. We're in the way of the fan blades there. I might have to come underneath that, underneath this heat sink here or something. But yeah, that's a bit of an awkward one, that. So I'm going to have another bash at that and see how we go. Kind of that interfering with the fan. I think once we get a 
red sleeved cable through here or something, it's going to look a little better than this black thing with the heat shrink and everything. But for right now, we are free of those fan blades at least. It does impinge the, the airflow a little bit, so maybe we'll move that fan to the back of the case here anyway. I think that'll... Was that a different... No, that's a different size fan. Okay. So maybe we replace that fan with one that goes there uh, and, and, and solve that issue once and for all. But uh, for now, it's tidy enough. It's good enough for government work. Actually, it's much better than, for, than, than government work, really. It uh, exceeds all expectations for government work. But, yeah, from back here, it looks all right. So, again, we're not too worried about aesthetics at this stage, but I do want to pay a little bit of attention to it. I want the initial stage to at least look good, not suck. So, drives come next, I think. I think we're just about done with the motherboard here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so I am going to yeah, need a couple of these SATA cables. Now, the motherboard comes with a couple of straight ones and a couple of right angle. No, one straight one? No, two, yeah, two of each. A couple of right angled ones and a couple of straight ones. And I'll get those on camera for you so you can see the difference here. Uh, and I think what I'll use is the, well, I think probably the straight ones are going to get me the best cable management uh, uh, option there because the drives themselves aren't on display, so I don't need to use the right angled uh, connection in, in, in the drive itself, which we do if it is inside the front of the case or anything like that to make it look a little bit tidier. But if we use the straight ones, uh, they're going to look fine. You're not going to see the, them connect to the drives at the back of the case anyway, hidden in the drive bay. And, and right here, where the SATA ports are, I think we can come straight out of that and straight through the grommet here, or maybe even that one come across there or something. Uh, we might do this one, actually. This one's getting a little bit crowded. If we put too many more cables through there, it's going to sort of... I don't know. I don't know. We'll do this one, just for the sake of... Just for the sake of going... Some, well, I don't know. I don't know. Ch keep changing my mind. We'll find out what happens when I actually go to run the cables, which I'm going to do right now. So let's uh, get these cables plugged into the appropriate place on the motherboard, and... Uh, then we'll come back and put the drives in. Okay, and there we go, nice and tidy. I might uh, replace these cables too, because this <laughs> wire technology is, is a bit silly, having that there. In fact, I think I might switch these cables around, because the one underneath it doesn't have that printing on there. So I might swap these around so that weird text is in there. What, is it, what does it say? Is there a complete version? Here we go. It is... Uh, Serial ATA, 6 gear, blah, 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 wire technology, okay. Whatever, so I'm going to switch those cables around real quick, just so we don't have that weird white text showing, which just says wire technology, which is super weird, just to have that alone showing, so bear with me. There we go, much better, a nice subtle black cable, just going into the little grommet there, and we'll, we'll fix that up a little bit so it doesn't, uh, there we go, it's a little bit better. Well, look better once the back's on the case, you won't be able to see through the grommet very easily. It'll be all dark and stuff in there. Let's just get those. There we go. There we go. That's nailed it. Boom. Nailed it. Can't stop me. Unstoppable. Right. Drive time. Uh, so as we talked about in the other videos, get that out of the way, uh, we have a couple of mechanical hard drives to go in straight away. I'm still waiting on the uh, SSD, the... the, the review SSD to come in and of course I haven't purchased the SSD that I intended to get for the system yet because I just uh, the budget couldn't make it that far but I've got a couple of uh, mechanical hard drives here which I have recovered from a laptop both 2.5 inch because from a laptop uh, one of them is a 5200 RPM um, 500 gigabyte hard drive Seagate it's the um, what is the model model of this thing again I forget what it is something ridiculous and cheap um, and, I've, and the WD Scorpio Black uh, 750 gigabytes. So this will be enough to get me up off the ground until I get the SSDs and get that lovely sweet boost in performance. Um, right, okay. So let's pull out a couple of these drive trays. I'll do the ones on uh, either end so they have a little space in between them because of course mechanical hard drives do tend to generate heat. Although these ones aren't too bad. There we go. We just clip them straight into the toolless drive uh, carry cage there. You can uh, also uh, use these to screw your drives in if you want to. I think you can replace these little rubber spring-loaded grommet thingies uh, with screws. Um, and I think some of those screws are exactly for that. But uh, I'm not going to be traveling with this case. And, you know, these aren't going anywhere. Uh, the only reason you would ever screw them is if, if you're 
you know, use your case for going to and from, say, lands and stuff, and it gets a lot of uh, 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 bumping in traveling stuff. And sorry for my squeaky seat. I need to replace this chair. This is awful, uncomfortable chair. Especially if I'm going to be sitting at a desktop computer for more hours of the day instead of my laptop on my couch. There we go. Lovely, easy to snap in there. So we'll put that guy at the back. Actually, what we might do is route the cables up through that cage, connect it to the drive, and then drop it back in because it's starting to get a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, clustered back here. So the one underneath we'll do on the, uh, on the WD, and we'll do the top one on the Seagit. Makes sense to me. So let's route this guy up through the cage. Zoop, and we'll get him connected there. Uh, wrong, incorrect, other way. There we are. Now, is that going to slide back in nice and easy for me? Good. All right, we'll get that back out there. Power. Sata power. Yes, you're the ones I want. You're the one that I want. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I can't believe I just, like, quoted Greece. I hate that musical. In fact, I hate most musicals because... Uh, whoops, no, wait. That's the wrong connector. I want... Wait, 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 wait. What am I doing? Did I grab the wrong cable? I did I grab the wrong cable. What am I doing? Oh, no, I see. Now yeah, I see what's going on. All right, let's... Let's grab... That one. That's actually the one that I want. These ones are the... Yeah, the IDs on them. So, I think the most sensible way to do this would be... I mean, we've got three drive bays, three connectors here. We'll do a W shape for the empty drive bay. We'll leave that middle one empty just for when I fill it with an SSD or something. So that will make this slightly trickier. So we'll come in through there. Come through. I probably should have done this portion a bit earlier because uh, it's getting a bit tricky to route these cables around, but we're dealing with it. I've made my decision and now I have to live with it. Uh, which way around? This needs to go this way. Do, 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 do. All right. Data and power connected. I'll thread that wire back down there, please. This is going to make my life a little difficult when it comes to the SSD, but not impossible. Do, 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 do. There we are. And mounted. Okay, good. So we'll leave that one spare hanging. Uh, we've already got the drive out. Good. Uh, second SATA connector, data connector, up through the drive bay. And connecting in. Wrong, incorrect, other way around. That wrong, incorrect thing I keep doing, I picked that up from a Minecraft stream. Uh, Let's play or YouTube guy, streamer guy. I watched a whole bunch of his videos the other day, and he has this thing where he, he says, when he does something wrong, it's wrong, incorrect, and somehow just stuck. This is in a funny voice, and it made me, it, it amuses me. And now I'm doing it too, because I'm I'm I pick up bad habits very, very easily. But it makes me kind of smile every time I do it. Wrong, incorrect. Uh, whoops, no, I had it right the first time. Wait, why aren't you cooperating with me? Will you go in there, please? There we go. It's like a USB. You have to try it four different ways until it just went in the right way. It's, uh, uh, uh what do you call it? Quantum mechanics superposition type of connector. Okay, so that's a bit of a cable mess there, but that's all right. That, I think, is everything. That's the right angle camera. Put that back in the box for when we need it. So, all we have left are these unused cables here, and I'll, I'll take you through what's unused here, just in case you're curious of why there's so many unused. There are these, which are the Molex type connectors, uh, which are used on larger hard drives and uh, optical drives and stuff like that, mostly. I don't know whether they actually are that commonly used anymore, but they are, they are a standard connector, so you need some of those at least. Some peripherals need them, some don't. Some use the SATA power connector. Uh, these, ugly, ugly blue cables here. These are the, the power options for the graphics cards. Uh, so if you're running, you know, up to two graphics cards, uh, 
Again, something's changed from back in my day. Back in my day, it was extremely rare for a graphics card to need its own power supply. Back in my day, last time I built a system from scratch, um, graphics cards just pulled their power through the PCIe port. But yeah, these days they're much more power hungry and powerful overall, so they need the separate power. So that's what these are. And obviously I don't have my dedicated graphics card yet, so we don't need to worry about those at this stage. And then we have another chain of uh, a couple of SATA power connectors and a couple of Molex, uh, one Molex and one mini uh, Molex, which is, um, I didn't even know they still use these. This, this used to belong to floppy drives. I'm not sure what they use it for these days. Probably uh, probably those front panel connection uh, displays and stuff like that, I would expect. So they'll, they'll probably use Molex, I would guess. But yeah, I guess some things still use that little, uh, little floppy drive connector guy. <laughs> I had no idea they still existed, you know? Floppy drives have been dead for a couple of decades at least. Well, maybe not that long. Maybe a decade they've been fairly dead. When did Apple stop using floppy drives? And everyone freaked out. You can't, you can't put a computer without a floppy drive. People need floppy drives. Yeah, well, guess who was right? No one uses them anymore. Apple was on the bleeding edge again. They were right. Just like when they got rid of optical drives. You'll notice, of course, no optical drive in the system. There isn't even a space in this case for optical drives. No such thing. Ex I mean... I'm not even sure you could put an optical drive in this case if you wanted to. There's literally no space for it. I suppose you could mod the case and try and get it sort of in here. Maybe. But if I do need an optical drive, I do have a USB optical drive that I've had for years and years and years and years and years, by the way, and it still works perfectly fine for the very rare occasion where I actually need to read an optical disk on a machine that doesn't have its own drive, which is most of my machines now, actually. Uh, I've still got one Mac that's operational that has an optical drive. That one doesn't, the air doesn't have obviously, well, yeah. So I've got one machine that has a built-in optical drive still, and that's a, I guess, six or seven year old Mac that's, that's sitting behind the TV at the moment serving as a media server. Anyway, that is pretty much job done as far as the case goes. There's a bit of cable management to do. Uh, well, actually there's not. I mean, it's all sitting flush there. And I am going to, like I said, rejigger some of the stuff down the range and, and, and switch out the fans and use some sleeve cables. So I could probably pile all this into the drive cage here, really, if I wanted to be super nutty about it. But the drives have, yeah, the drives have some nice airflow. They don't need a rear fan, really, but they've got convection helping them out there. The path down through there is fairly clear. Clear enough for, for air to gently pass over them and convect away. Um, we haven't obstructed any vents or anything on the power supply. Uh, and we're pretty much good to go. I can I can put the um, put the case. Actually, I won't put the case panels back on yet. I want to make sure this thing actually runs before I do that. But that will be in the next part because I think this 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 episode has gone on quite long enough as it is. But that is the build. I'm gonna finish the build with a bit of um, music, I suppose, over some some quick montage of a couple of. Um, I was going to say glamour shots, but I'm doing good with my iPhone, so they won't be particularly glamorous, especially with that light glaring off the lens still. We'll do that. There we go. So, a bit of a, a quick look at how the machine looks. There we are. Just trying to, yeah, see see the, see the flare I'm getting from that light that I've got shining on my face? Yeah. So, yeah, fairly, I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with this cable management job I've done. It's not the best cable management ever. I mean, there's still, we could, we could tidy that up a bit. That sort of loops around. We can push that behind the, behind the, rail there and keep that sort of down a bit and that same with that one we could probably bury that one a little bit just a little bit easier and we can tidy up this a bit uh, and we can get rid of these these jumpers which i decided i don't like um the sata looks pretty good we might we might replace those with some colored sata cables i wouldn't mind those in bright red that's a nice little line going straight across there we can make sure this kind of sitting really nice and level so maybe yeah or maybe we'll do a red one behind the black one. It'll just see a bit of bit of a splash of red, just like on the edge here. But you know, that's all things down the road when we go to uh, work on the aesthetics of the case. This this annoys me. This partially sleeved cable just ends in heat shrink and all these. I'm definitely going to replace this with an extension. That that's job number one for aesthetics. Replace this with a really nice red extension. Oh, we need to do something about the CPU connector as well. I mean, I wonder if there's a flat cable you can get to to extend this instead of this rounded cable. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. I need to uh, I need to work on that too. But aside from a couple of little aesthetic things, uh, and we don't have any lights or anything in the case at this stage. Oh, there we go, focus please. Uh, we're looking, I mean, you know, and then stock cooler, but that's going to change to something 
something a little more attractive and more efficient as well. But um, yeah, you know, we're, we're looking pretty good for the first stage of this build. We'll come around the back here as well. And uh, we'll get a look at that. See, that's, that's a bit of a mess there, but it's not too bad. It's not all bunched up or anything. It's, you know, untidy, but, uh, but not gross. Uh, it'll get the job done for a boot up at least. So I guess I guess we're not doing music underneath that part because I kind of talked all the way through it, which I'll probably leave in. But that's job done. Next episode we will jump to, I will plug this thing into a mon monitor and see about booting it up, make sure it all still works, and then we'll, uh, we'll install Windows, which I won't show you on camera because if you don't know what a Windows install looks like, um, probably hooray for you because it's an incredibly boring and tedious process. But I will get it up to a running stage. Um, we'll, we'll boot it up. I'll show you that on, on camera for the, the first official boot up of, of everything connected with the drives and everything. Uh, and then we'll cut and then we'll jump to after the Windows install and uh, see it up and running to the desktop. And that will be the next episode basically to make sure this machine works. Uh, and then episodes following on from that. Well, I've got a plan, but I'm not going to tell you what it is because I'm not sure which order I'm going to do them in yet. But please congratulate me. Thumb me up for a completed build. And hopefully it was moderately entertaining for you. I mean, these things are always, they're either really, really tedious and boring for some people or really interesting for other people. Hopefully I've struck the right balance to, for, for the nerds and the newbies alike to, to both enjoy the build process. But that's it for me for now. Thank you for watching. I am Blunty. I will catch you next time in the next episode. I'm going to take a brief break. Uh, might even go get a beer, actually, before we boot this thing up. I feel like I've earned a beer, don't you? So give me a like or a thumbs up or something if you think I deserved a beer. I earned a beer. Mm. That's warm.